Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our worship service for this, the last Sunday of April, the third Sunday of Easter. It's wonderful to have you all here. We have, uh, we, we're, we're building up our music this week as we have our morning prayer service from the Book of Alternative Service this week. We're glad to invite Harvey and Glennis to be doing some uh, songs for us this week here in the church. And before anybody asks, there's only four of us here. So don't, don't, be, uh, don't be calling anybody about it. So there's only four of us here, we're fine. <laughs> and we're all sitting all over the place. <laughs> we're sitting on two sides of the chancel, so we're not even close to each other. But I'm grateful for you both to be here, and it's wonderful that we'll be able to share that music together. We're going to be doing the, the morning prayer service from your book of alternative service. I'm going to include a digital copy in the liner notes of the video so that if you need to use one of those, you can. But most of you should have one at home. And I'm also going to try my best to uh, add some of the lyrics to the songs we'll be doing today. I'm going to invite uh, uh, Harvey to come up and start for us today. He's going to lead us in the song, Because He Lives. Which is in your songbook if you got one home, and if number, you don't, we're going to try 13. number 13 in the songbook. But if not, uh, I'm going to see if I can't get some of the lyrics for you. So he's going to come up now. So you adjust it to your leg. Okay, oh, see it on? God sent his son They called him Jesus He came to love Heal and forgive He lived and died Living 
just because he lives and then one day I'll cross that river I'll fight life's fight no war with pain and then has death gives way to victory I'll see the light of glory and I know he lives because he lives I can face church again, besides me and, and Owen. <laughs> we do all right. Our opening prayer, the penitential rite, comes on page 45 of the Book of Alternative Service. Lord Jesus, open to us the scriptures. Make our hearts burn within us while you speak. Seek the Lord while he, draws, while he wills to be found, and call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil ones their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord, and he will have compassion, and to our God, for he will richly pardon. Dear friends in Christ, as we prepare to worship Almighty God, let us with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. And for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now today, being it's the season of Easter, we're going to use as well the introductory sentences, and they can be found a little while later on page 98. So, sorry to make you jump around a bit, but page 98, the opening sentences for the resurrection. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord, Lord is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He, he gave us new life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. dead. Rejoice then, even in your distress. We, we shall be counted worthy when Christ appears. God has claimed us as his own. He comes call us from our darkness into the light of his day. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Hallelujah. 
And continuing then with the whole idea of the Easter season, we turn back to page 50. That's the last time we're jumping around. Page 50, we pray Christ our Passover, and we're going to read it by the verse. So I will begin with Alleluia, Christ our Passover, and then we'll start every verse after that. Alleluia, Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, therefore let us keep the feast. Not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Hallelujah. Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. For the life he lives, he lives to God. So consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all may die. Hallelujah. If you're at home, I'm so used to saying, please be seated. <laughs> but whether you're standing or sitting, however no one is going to lead us in our first reading for today. from Acts chapter 2. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, saying, Therefore let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? And Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, and for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to, you, to him. And he testified with many other arguments, and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptized, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm for today is found on page 864. 864, Psalm 116, page 864. 864. And we're going to be reading verses 1 to 3 and 10 to the end responsibly. So we start on page 864. I love the Lord because he has heard the voice of my supplication, because he has inclined his ear to me whenever I called upon him. Of death entangled me. The grip of the grave took hold of me. I came to grief and sorrow. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I pray to you, save my life. And we go to verse How, 10. how shall I repay the Lord for all the good things he has done for me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his servants. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant and the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer you the sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of you, O Jerusalem, hallelujah. We say the prayer at the end together. Eternal God, faithful in your tender compassion, you give us hope for our life here and hereafter through the victory of your only Son. 
when we share his cup of salvation, revive in us the joy of his everlasting gift. We ask this in his name. Amen. second reading is taken from 1st Peter chapter 1. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile. You know that you were ransomed from this futile ways inherited from your ancestors. Not with, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was distant before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the age for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable, but, but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring Word of God. The Word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. There's a garden where Jesus is waiting. There's a place that is wondrously fair. For it glows with the light of his presence. Tis the beautiful garden of prayer. Oh, the beautiful garden, the garden of prayer. Oh, the beautiful garden of prayer. There my Savior awaits, and he opens the gates to the beautiful garden of prayer. There's a garden where Jesus is waiting, and I go with my burden and cares, just to learn from his lips words of comfort in the beautiful garden of prayer. Oh, the beautiful garden, the garden of prayer. Oh, the beautiful garden of prayer. There my Savior awaits, and he opens the gates to the beautiful garden of prayer. There's a garden where Jesus is waiting, and he bids you to come meet him there. Just to bow and receive a new blessing in 
in the beautiful garden of prayer. Oh, the beautiful garden, the garden of prayer. Oh, the beautiful garden of prayer. There the Savior awaits, and he opens the gates to the beautiful garden of prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, and about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all the things that, were, that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. And then one of them, was named Cleophas, answered, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? And Jesus asked them, What things? And they replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and elders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it was now the third day since these things took place. And moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and they told us that indeed they had seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. And then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And then, beginning with Moses and all of the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. And as they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly to stay, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went to stay with them. And he, when he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Were our hearts not burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together, and they were saying, The Lord has risen indeed. He has appeared to Simon. And then they told them what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I pray to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The colleagues, epistles and gospel for Sundays following Easter are all focused on the new life made possible by the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. As of now, the death has been overcome and the gate to eternal life is wide open. I want you to picture this morning the scene in the gospel. The scene is a very familiar one to us. The, the reading is a very familiar one. It is entitled, The Walk to Emmaus. 
And so much has taken place in the lives of the disciples over the last few days, it is if they are in a whirlwind. And Cleophas and his friend have decided to leave Jerusalem and go to Emmaus. And they are apparently are very sad and disappointed and maybe disillusioned a little. And as there, and Emmaus is about seven miles or 11 kilometers from Jerusalem and as they are walking along, Jesus comes up near them, comes up alongside of them, but they do not recognize him. And Jesus says to them, what have you been discussing as you're walking along? And they just stop and sort of look at him. And, and they say, you must be the only stranger in Jerusalem who do not know about the things that have happened over the last couple of days. And Jesus says to them, what things? And then they explain to him and tell him all about what happened to Jesus, how Jesus of Nazareth had been arrested and by the, uh, because of the uh, high priests and the elders and that um, he was a prophet. A, a man. Well, I'll, I'll read what it says here. They say, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. And our, and our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had thought he was going to redeem Israel. And so then they go on and tell him about the, the women who had come, uh, ran to the tomb in the morning, the, the morning uh, of that day, and had found the tomb empty. But they had a vision of angels, and the angels had told them that Jesus was alive. You were looking for the, the living among the dead. So then Simon Peter and one of his friends also went to the tomb and found it as as the women had said. But Jesus, after they had told him this, immediately said to them, O oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. Jesus, you know, could easily have said to them, I am Jesus. Don't you recognize me? Don't you see me who I am? I am alive. But he didn't. He expounded to them on the scriptures. And now he talks to us as well. Because we could be on that road to Emmaus. We may have an Emmaus road. We could be somewhere where we are disappointed and sad and disillusioned and disappointed. Um, and, but Jesus wants us to find him in the scriptures. He wants us to, we cannot see him physically, but we can see him through our eyes of faith in scripture. In today's world, moderation is something that we hear a lot about. Moderation, uh, sleep in moderation, eat in moderation, exercise in moderation. Everything in moderation is good for you. But when it comes to scripture, we do not talk about moderation. We seek him continuously, don't we? We cannot pray in moderation or worship in moderation or do Bible study in moderation. We have to go all out when it comes to Scripture. And then finally, they recognize Jesus when he breaks, when he blesses and breaks the bread. But then he disappears from their sight. So they immediately get up and leave and go back to Jerusalem. And they tell the disciples, they meet with the disciples and others and tell them immediately, tell them their experience of that they had seen Jesus and he was alive. And while they were talking, if we went down to verse 36, and while they were talking about that, Jesus himself 
stood among them and said, Peace be with you. So now they know without a shadow of a doubt that Jesus is alive. And there's one little point that I want to go back to. And that is, when, when they got to Emmaus, uh, Jesus was apparently, or appeared to be going on. And they asked him if he would stay with them because it was getting late in the evening. And so he um, took their invitation and went in with them. But I want to show, I, I want to show on this that how important this little point is, because Jesus does not push himself on anyone, does he? God wants us, or wants our love to be voluntary. He gives us the freedom to choose to say yes or no to our relationship with him. Only sincere love can satisfy the heart of God. We cannot understand the love of the Father without knowing the Son. We cannot understand the love of the Father without knowing the Son. And Jesus gives us an invitation in, in Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28. He says, Come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am humble and gentle in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And also if we turn to John 14, 6, Jesus says to uh, Thomas, I think it is, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you are drowning and someone throws you a lifeline, say you're out in a boat and your boat tips over and you're in the water and maybe you can't swim, but all of a sudden this, this boat t turns up from nowhere and someone throws you a line and you grab onto it and they pull you to safety. If you didn't take hold of that line, what would happen? You would have drowned. God also gives us a lifeline, you know, and that lifeline is Jesus Christ, who had to die on a, on a cross and be raised again for our sake. He did it all for us, men and women, boys and girls. He did it all for our salvation. The cross is the heart of our faith, and the cross has sealed the reconciliation between God and man. But thanks be to God that the cross was not the end. Good Friday and Easter Sunday were represented in one mighty act. Remember when Jesus was on his way to um, Bethany when Lazarus had died? Uh, and now he was already dead, and even for four days. And as he's got close to Bethany, Martha ran out to meet him. And during her conversation, you know, uh, this Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who believes in me will never die. And then he asked her a very important question. He said, do you believe this? Do you believe this? And that's important for us today. We have to answer that question as well. Do we believe what Jesus just said, that he is the resurrection and he is life? You see that he died on the cross, that we believe that his, his blood covers our sins, and that he is truly the Son of God, and that he is no longer dead but is alive, and he will do the same for us. Jesus is our living water, he is our good shepherd, he is our means of grace and hope of glory. He who was dead is alive, and we, baptized into his death, are here and now, partakers of his resurrection. In Galatians 2.20, Paul says, It is no longer I that liveth, but God that liveth in me. We do not live by sight, but by faith. And you know, a lot of times, we, like the two men, 
on the road to Emmaus did not recognize Christ, although he was walking with them. And a lot of times he walks with us, and we do not recognize him. And through the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus, you know, he is our constant companion, our constant guide, our constant friend, and our constant help. And you know, there's many times we meet, we meet him in the Eucharist when we come here on a Sunday morning and we celebrate the Eucharist, we meet Christ. We meet him where two or three are gathered together in his name. He promises that he is there in the midst of us. And especially when we come together in unity, in community within our church as a group, he's there with us. When we would visit someone sick, especially at the bedside of a dying person, there's no doubt that Jesus is there with us. And when we visit the prisoner, when we clothe the naked, when we feed the hungry, when we give water to the thirsty, we meet Jesus. On the day of ascension, he gave us a promise. It's from Matthew 28, 20. He said, and remember, I am with you always to the end of the age. He's not saying I'm with you just a little. I will be with you sometimes. He is saying I am with you always to the end of the age. And Paul, re oh, there is a lot we don't understand. And a lot is a mystery, isn't it? And that's where faith comes in. That's where Faith really comes in. And Paul reminds us of that in Corinthians 13, 12. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only part, only in part, but I will know fully even as I have fully, even as I have been fully known. As long as we are in this world, we will always experience sadness and tribulation, difficulties, difficulties and distress, sickness. There's, there's no escaping. If we live a life in this world, there's no escaping trouble. But we have to remember that we have a Savior. Jesus is our rock. He is our anchor. He is our joy in the midst of the storms. He understands. He's already passed through it. We live between two worlds, between heaven and earth. One is temporal and the other is eternal. And Christ has gone ahead of us to prepare a place for us. You know, he said, I prepare a place for you that where you are, that where I am, there you may be also. And I want to finish with one of my favorite verses, and it's from Corinthians 1, from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. And it says, The eye is not seen, and the ear is not heard, and the heart, the human heart, is not conceived, but God has prepared for those who love him. Amen. And let us pray. How beautiful and beyond our understanding, O oh God, is your mercy and loving kindness to us, that to redeem a sinner, you gave your Son. In Jesus' name.
Life is easy when you're up on the mountain. You've got peace of mind like you never know. Then things change and you're down in the valley. Don't lose faith for you're never Thank you, Herbie, and, and thank Glennis. And the, the one that Glennis sang, by the way, is in our songbook called Beautiful Garden of Prayer. Hear, O Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment. The second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourselves. There is no commandment greater than these. Our prayers of intercession now. In our Anglican cycle of prayer this morning, we pray for the Episcopal Church in Jerusalem and the Middle East, the most reverend Michael 
Lewis, Archbishop of Jerusalem and the Middle East. In our provincial prayer care, we pray for the Diocese of Fredericton, Bishop David Edwards. And in the Tri-Diocesan Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the Parish of Gamble, its rector, the Reverend Anna Dix. And for the Parish of Gander, we pray for the Right Reverend John Watton and Venerable Terry Keynes. And we continue uh, to keep in mind and keep in our prayers our companion diocese of Rokan, South Sudan, Bishop Francis. Third Sunday after Easter. Let us all who journey on the way with Christ who is risen and ever present in mystery pray for the world with all our hearts and minds, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church Universal and for our community of faith, that we may wholeheartedly devote ourselves to the apostolic teaching, to common life together to the breaking of bread and the life of prayer, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all the nations and people of this whole earth, that we may be delivered from the human devices of oppression and division, from ignorance and greed, and from false idols and futile ways, and instead turn toward he who gathers us together in one helpful, caring, giving family, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who grieve or who are desperate or haunted by violence may know the hidden strength of Christ present in their midst. Today we pray especially for the victims of the mass shooting in Nova Scotia, for their families, and for the victim uh, and for the loved ones. We also pray for Archbishop Ron Cutler and the Diocese of Nova Scotia and PEI, the Nova Scotia RCMP and emergency personnel. May the Lord and all of us in solidarity walk with them in this time of tragedy. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in need, for those without homes, those without bread, those without mercy or driven to anger that they may find refuge and strength in he who walks with them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick, those in hospitals, the struggling, the afraid, the lonely, and all who, who seek comfort and reassurance in the midst of the global crisis that we all face each day, we pause and invite you to remember anyone uh, named aloud or in the songs of our heart, for those who are sick, and we remember Wentz, Brenda, John, Sylvia, Nathleen, Beverly, Brenda, Judy, Gordon, Leah, Melina, and Roy and Roy. Walk with them, O Lord, and let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our, our prayer. prayer. For the children of calamity and for our own children, that they may come to know and claim the promises of God for all generations to come, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Preserve us together. Preserve us all, O Lord, and take us home to your heart, so that all our lives may be woven together in prayer and praise no matter where we are, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we continue with our prayers today, our colic prayer uh, can be found for the third Sunday after Easter. And I'm going to say it for us today. O God, your Son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith that we may know him in his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say together, 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And we say the grace together, and you can say it at home. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all forevermore. Amen. God bless you folks. It's wonderful that we could do this today. Thank you to Reverend Owen for his wonderful message. Thank you to Glennis and Harvey for all your wonderful music. We got one left. <laughs> he, he hasn't forgotten. Uh, before we finish, though, the last song we're going to sing, which is in your songbook, is When the Sun Comes Up Tomorrow, which is on page... Thank you. It's number 161 in the songbook. Uh, but before we do that, just one other little thing, something we haven't done in a while. Uh, I want you to think... Uh, of everyone this we've and I'm not just doing this because there are certain birthdays in April but <laughs> we haven't thought about birthdays in a while and I want you to remember in your prayers those who have celebrated and uh, you can either email them or not email them to me but you can add them to the comments underneath this message if you want to celebrate or if there's anybody that you want to remember in prayer and that you want to share with us, whether it be a celebration of someone's success, such as a, a birthday or an anniversary. If someone is sick that we didn't mention here, we would love to keep them in prayer. So on the Facebook page underneath where this video is, in the comments, you can leave a prayer for them and ask us to keep them in prayer. So that's okay. Whether it's a uh, celebration of something, whether it's someone's birthday. I know uh, Roy and Olive late had their 61st, an 61st anniversary this past week. So, uh, happy anniversary, last week, happy anniversary to them, this past Thursday. I don't know if there was any other anniversaries. No? Yeah, not no. So, see, I might not know, so you got to get me those. And I know myself and Reverend Owen have a birthday the same week, so, you know, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm just, I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> throwing that out there. <laughs> yep. He's 39 and I'm 71. <laughs> so there you go. I'll give him that. <laughs> but seriously, it, in the middle of all our celebrations uh, and things that we are grateful for, these are things that are worth remembering even in the midst of times of trouble and trial. So add them to the comments in our Facebook page and that will be a wonderful thing to share as we go forward with worship. So with all that said and done, again, thank you to our wonderful singers and musicians today, and we're going to try and continue. We're still working on seeing if we can do a Zoom choir. There's a lot more complicated than it sounds. <laughs> so anyway, until then, we're grateful for everyone who can come. We're going to sing together when the sun comes up tomorrow, which, like I said, I'm number 161. It should be one that you all are familiar with. God bless you, folks.
am not worthy of blessings that you give. Although the storms may gather and should the skies be blue, when the sun comes up tomorrow, Lord, I'll be praising you.